continue to bless us the way you have. Continue to spread your love and your grace over this uh, over this congregation in the new year. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. For giving. For giving. Thank you for your giving. To the Lottie Moon offering. Toward Lottie Moon. Thank you for giving to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. But most importantly, due to your generosity, we've been able to share God's word with those around us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you, First Baptist Church in Riverside, California. Because you gave, I'm able to access remote areas of Central Asia and explain the gospel with people God is already drawing to himself. With your help, we are bringing light to the dark places among unreached people groups. Because of what you've given, it allows me to share this gospel with as many Central Asians as I can across London. Your giving allows our organization to provide need for refugees and to give them hope. Thank you for giving to the Lottie Moon Christmas Offering so that we can buy Bibles in Arabic that we use with our Discovery Bible Study with non-believers. Because of your generosity, African women are hearing stories from God's Word while henna is being drawn on their hands and arms. And because of your giving, the life changes that we see through faith in Jesus Christ, that happens because of your gifts. Thank you for giving to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering and helping to provide this wonderful water filter here in Northern Thailand. Your giving allows me to continue with my medical license here in Ghana, where I can not only do surgeries, but also the patients have the opportunity to hear the gospel. So thank you. Because of your giving, I'm able to speak to these thousand kids every Wednesday morning. Thank you. Thank you, First thank Baptist, Baptist Church. Thank you, Faith Promise Church. Thank you, Christina Baptist Church. Thank you for giving to Lati Moon. Thank you, and God bless you. I want to say thank you, and God bless each and every one of you. You are a blessing, and I thank you. Uh, by the way, yes, I am wearing a Hawaiian shirt because it is freezing outside. It is cold, and I'm going to project summer. So there you go, all right? Hey, it, it works for me, and that, that, that's what counts. It's good to say I have good news and good news for you. Now. How many of you want to hear some good news? I want you to know we reached our Lottie Moon goal. But the really good news is we exceeded our Lottie Moon goal. You want to show them the... the Who gets glory for that? <laughs> I wish we had a camera on faces. Don't let the flies fly in the mouth, okay? Yeah. In God good. In God gracious. Now, only God could do something like that, people. Only God could do something like that. The only thing I ever ask is you ask... Seek God, and when he shows you what to do, you do it. Don't question him. If it's beyond you, that's okay. God never calls us to anything that's within our grasp. God's call to us is always goes beyond our grasp. God wants us to know that he's in control, that he's in charge. Only God could do something like that. Seek him listen and obey the blessings are absolutely incredible so i would join that uh, choir of thank yous out there to each of you out there each of you that are in here and say thank you thank you responding to what god directed to you don't you think we ought to worship him today <laughs> buck <laughs> Would it be something if we if, if he doubled our goal? You know what Janice said to me? She said that's gonna make next year's goal real interesting. <laughs> oh it's a, it's a challenge. You think God's stretching us? I do. I do. 
Stretch out your tents, drive down your pegs. God is doing a fresh work. I want to thank you. God bless all of you. God bless. Thanks, Pastor. And Lord, I want to say thank you again. Thank you for what you have done. It's a, it's a great feeling to know that God is working and God is moving. Let's think about that as we're singing this morning, about how we, we want to see God high and lifted up. If you want to stand, you can stand. If you want to sit, just however you want to worship this morning, um, let's just worship together. If you're at home, <coughs> chill in your PJs and sing along. All your neighbors will think you're crazy, but that's awesome. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. You high lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing, Holy, Holy, Holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted <coughs> up. Shining in the light of your glory out your power and love as we sing holy 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 to see you high lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 holy
every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues of love. Praise the mountain fixed upon it, Mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from Interpose thy precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy grace, Lord, like a feather, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord. Take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Here's my heart, Lord. Take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. <coughs> <coughs> Blessing and honor, strength and glory 
and power be to you the only wise king holy 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 is the lord god almighty who was and is and is to come with all creation i sing praise to the king of kings you are my everything and i will adore you filled with wonder awestruck wonder at the mention of your name Jesus your name is power breath and living water such a marvelous mystery With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything and I will adore you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is. all creation we sing praise to the king of kings you are my everything and i will adore you heavenly father thank you for this gift of your presence this morning as we gather together and sing your praise and lift our hearts to you. We ask that you open the eyes of our hearts so that we can see you. We ask that all of these words that we're singing will ring true and that we'll feel your presence in a very real way this morning. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, listen up, boys. The ribs are going to be on the smoker. Debbie's making her world-famous lemon squares. And neither one of you bums have yet to RSVP to my New Year's Eve party to watch the ball drop. Watch the ball drop? Yeah. When in the last millennium have you stayed up past 7.30, old man? <laughs> and besides that, did you get those ribs approved by your cardiologist? I did. He's bringing the hot links. Sure, yeah so he can charge you for another stint. And by the way, not that it's any of your beeswax, but the queen and I, we have plans for later today. Ooh. Look, I don't mean to be spilling tea here, but your wife does not need to be on the back of a Harley Davidson. Some wigs just don't look good in a helmet. <laughs> we're taking the Toyota. Oh. Yeah, and we're going to the cemetery to wish a happy new year to our real friends, because that's where all of them are including the fourth leaf to our lucky clover. Domino, Domino Dan. Dan. Uh, playing baseball with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Dan always came to my New Year's parties every year. Mm -hmm. I didn't even have to invite him. He just came, unlike the two of you. I used to ring in the New Year with a bang. I did. So I had big thoughts of better and more. <laughs> I'd say to myself, Maybe this year will be different. Huh. You ever have that year, boys? You know the one where everything went right. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Tell you what I did run into was God. 
his mercies. They are new every morning. That's what the good book says, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a do-over. Every day is a do-over. That's what New Year's is to me. It is a gift from God of 365 new beginnings. Now, who don't want that? Amen. captured by that last line and it made a whole new idea coming into the new year. 365 new beginnings. That's what New Year's means. That's kind of neat. By the way, I'm going to share something with you. I'll follow up on it later, but Buck, I got a text no more than by the time I got back there, I got a text on my, on my, on my Dick Tracy watch. You know, man, I was, you remember when you was a kid, Dick Tracy, and you thought, man, wouldn't that be neat to have? And now we have them. Now we have Dick Tracy watches. I got a text, somebody pledging $500 to Lottie Moon, which will double, which, you know, it's something contagious when God gets to moving and working in something, you know, that uh, uh, I, I, you know, I just tell you, Buck, I, you know, it's, it's just amazing to me what God does with and through and in a people who will just simply listen to him. Remember some years ago when I came here for the first time and somebody asked the question, what did I want to see happen in a church? If I, okay, I said, my only goal is that we could raise up a people who just simply seek God. And when they know what God is saying, they don't question him. They just do what God says. And they walk in obedience. That's all I want. Content, happy. You know, like, well, my daddy would say a pig in slop. I don't know if that's, that's kosher to say today, but uh, so I won't say that. How's that? All right. Well, how can we make the most out of the upcoming year that we have in front of us? How can we most glorify God? And, you know, if I don't do this, Justin, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be knocking my head on it somewhere along the line. <laughs> All right? Uh, just last week, we spent some time during the morning, those of you that are plugged into the mornings, looking at five imperatives, you know, that, that ought to outfit our life as we go into the new year. They're, they're old imperatives, you know, they're old truths. You know, let's face it, there's nothing new under the sun, right? These are old truths, but when we take them and reapply them to our life moving forward, they give us a new energy. They give us, they give us a new uh, focus upon what lies ahead of us. Let's face it, uh, as, as much as we, we may say it, we really come to realize how uncertain everything is out there in the future, don't we? I mean, we live in a great day of uncertainty all the way around. And I don't think this year is going to be any different than, than the last two as far as that goes. In fact, it could get a lot uh, uglier since this is, again, a what? Election year? Yeah, talk about uncertainty, folks. Let's, you know, let's go there. But we started with be consecrated, then went on to be observant, and then be prepared, and be free, faithful, and last and Friday was be fruitful for those of you that have been plugged in. So I'd like to continue that thought this morning, as I told you Friday that I was going to, and attempt to uh, complete my answer and give you four more imperatives in order to uh, do that, I, I want to look at a familiar passage, okay? It's in Joshua in the first chapter. Uh, Moses has died, and uh, uh, they're about to, Joshua's about to step up and assume command and lead the people across the Jordan into the promised land, into the land of Canaan that God had promised them. No one in Israel could have any concept of the changes and challenges that were before them just like you and I, really don't know. We didn't know at the beginning of last year what was going to happen this year. I do think that most, most people went into this year thinking that we would be out of all of this silliness by maybe uh, March or April and we'd be back to normal. And how's that worked out for you? Huh? 
That worked out so good, has it? And uh, I, I went in to, to, to buy ham the other day, just to tell you, uh, to, over to Honey Bake to get a ham. And I, I walked in, and, and I'd had it over. They brought it out, and I said, I'd like to see. So oh, we can't show it to you. I said, you mean I have to buy ham without looking at it? She said, yes, I can't show it to you. I said, why can't you show it to me? She said, COVID. I nearly lost my stack at that point. You know, we, 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 we put everything out. Everything has changed because of, thank you, COVID, for the, uh, those of you that said that. You know, all uh, they had, sus- Israel had, had uh, all they had to sustain them and encourage them was the very same thing that you and I have to sustain us and to encourage us, and that is the promises and the commands of Jehovah. What God has said, that, that's what they had. They had marching orders. They knew some things they had to do. In fact, remember one of the first things that they said is be consecrated. They said, consecrate yourself today, for in three days, you know, you're going to, God's going to do a new thing among you. So they began with consecration and moved on out. And I can apply all of those, but for the sake of time, I think you can probably do some of that work yourself. Listen, God's admonition to Joshua, hear him today, and is he speaking directly to you? as you face, and I face, the uncertainties of what 2022 may hold. If you will, go to Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 through 9, where it says, Be strong and courageous, for you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it from the right or the left, so that you may achieve success wherever you go. Now, there's one thing that I think everybody would like to have in the coming year is success. Success in their private life, in their family life, in their social life, success in life. We, we want it. We look for it. This tells us how to achieve it. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then... You will make your way prosperous, and then you will achieve success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous? Do not be terrified or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Believe that? Father, I ask you to take your word and burn it into our heart. Lord, make it so real to us that, Father, we'll understand and we will grasp it for ourselves. We'll take it in like, like a starving man in a meal. And that, Lord, it will become the engrafted, ingrained word within our life that gives us purpose for today and hope for tomorrow. Now, Lord, teach us. Teach us. Bring us to bear at the feet of the cross, Lord, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. In here we find some timeless commands that have just as much bearing on our lives today as it did when when, uh, God was speaking to to Joshua on that day several several years ago, you know, back a bit. I wasn't there then, probably close to, but, you know, I wasn't there then. With many desires and, and, and resolutions being made for the new year, I want you to consider adding four that I'm going to give you in the morning to the five that I've already given you. The first one I want to talk to you about is be strong. Be strong in the Lord. Know where you get your strength from. Three times in this text, in rapid fire succession, God says to Joshua, be strong and courageous. Do you think that's a word for us today? Listen, I don't know about you, but there's enough spooky things out there that call for me to be uh, to, to, to show a little courage. There's enough things that will hammer at me and beat me down that I need to stand strong. With many daunting challenges uh, and imminent dangers ahead, this newly appointed leader had to remain strong in the strength that God alone supplies. He's facing a swollen Jordan River. Fortified cities, swarming enemies, uh, kings coming together to dispossess them and to destroy them. 
And Joshua had to be strong in his faith. If the mission and the calling of God was come to fruition, Joshua had to be strong. Similarly, Paul lays out the same kind of foundational work for you and I when he challenges us in Ephesians 6 and verse 10. He says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Where are you going to get your strength from? When things start getting, getting a little wobbly in the next uh, months and, and, and weeks and days and, you know, down through the year, where are you going to glean your strength? When you have a week like you had this last week, where are you going to get your strength? What are you going to hold on to? Again, when Paul speaks to young Timothy, he tells him in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad for his grace? We have strengthening grace. His grace should strengthen us for every challenge that we face. Strength rests upon a focused determination. Are we focused on Him? Where is our focus going to be in 2022? When God repeats the same admonition to be strong and, and courageous, it's not because you know, He has a speech impediment, nor is He OCD. When God repeats himself, he intended to do so, and when he repeats himself, you and I better perk up and listen up because there's something very important that he doesn't want us to miss. All right? It's like saying, verily, verily, not just, hey, listen to me, but hey, listen, listen to me now. We're commanded by God to be strong and courageous. And we know the task is not easy, but the work we're called to, that which we are called to do is to be strengthened, is to strengthen us as we move forward in obedience to his command. Boy, that seems like an overriding theme today, doesn't it? Hear God, know what he says, and then obey him. That, that, that increases our firm resolve. The ability to endure deepens our resolve to follow Him. When you act courageously, you'll find that God provides for you more courage down the road. God is with you. He not only strengthens you, but He'll do so as you put one foot in front of the other and move forward no matter what kind of obstacles are laying out in front of you. You see, you are never commanded to sit on the sidelines. We are, however, commanded to, you know, buckle up, hook up, and run with endurance the race that's set before us. Right? Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11 says, Let's rid ourselves of every obstacle and sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. With a firm focus, people, look at this. And looking only at Jesus, the originator and perfecter of the faith, who for the joy set before him did what? Endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Where's the focus going to be? Let's keep a sharper focus than ever upon our Lord. Too many believers are like the kid who sits in their daddy's car in the driveway going, vroom, vroom, vroom. Ever do that when you're a kid? Yeah, you know, you make a lot of noise, but you don't go nowhere. You can't steer a parked car. Those who are strong in the grace of God are divinely empowered for effective service. A.W. Tozer, one of my my all-time favorite preachers and authors, says this, the church at the moment needs men and women, the right kind of men and women, bold men and bold women. The talk is that we need revival, but God will will not revive mice. He will not fill rabbits with his Holy Spirit. Are you willing to stand boldly? Trusting God. No matter what 
coming by. I, I, I think of Israel crossing the Jordan. I've said this many times. How would you have liked to have been the priest carrying the ark? They're the first ones to get in the water. How would you like to have been that group of guys? Actually, how would you like to have been the two guys in the front? Because, you see, that water didn't stop when their feet hit. The water didn't stop until all four of them are in the water with this big, heavy ark on their shoulder in a flood. Anybody, everybody, anybody ever been in a flood? What kind of courage do you suppose that took? What kind of focus do you suppose that took? The overcoming strength of Christ is ours. Let us each be bold like a lion as we proceed forward into the uncertainty of what lies ahead. By meditating upon the gospel and seeking the Lord earnestly, we can be emboldened to go wherever God directs us throughout the new year. Be strong and courageous. In the Lord. Second, be straight in your walk. The second imperative we find in God's admonition to General Joshua is simply to walk straight, have a straight spiritual walk. Look at verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left so that you may achieve success wherever you go. If Joshua is to be victorious, then God requires a fullness of obedience. That requirement hasn't changed. If I want to demonstrate my love to God, I do that only one way. If you love me, you will what? Obey me. You see, if I say I love God, or I say I'm obeying God, it's saying the same thing. Because my obedience is a demonstration of my love for Him. He says to Joshua, he says, Don't, do not turn, not to the right or to the left, but stay straight. It's, it's, it, 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 it's to say he, he must not be pulled aside by the pursuits of, of, of uh, human wisdom, worldly wisdom, pagan idolatry in Canaan. And you just need to keep your focus and go straight. Get those blinders on, Joshua. Let the Word of God be, be blinders on your head so that you can just see forward. Instead, Joshua and all believers must stay on a narrow path, a strict path of obedience to God, no matter the temptation or the trial the Lord has given us. We need to follow Him in true faith, repentance when necessary, and absolute obedience constantly in surrender to Him. Here in verse 7, God links uh, two things to our ability to achieve success, and that's diligence and obedience. The first step is seen in verse 7 and 8 where he said to be careful to do according to, to what is in the law or according to the, the, the word of God, if you will. That word careful means to be on guard. Be diligent, be on guard. This gives us a picture of a sentry or a watchman who is diligent in his duty to stay alert and careful to guard against any disobeying of the word of God or the neglecting of it. Be careful. So we need to be careful. Joshua is told to be careful not to turn from the word, not to the right hand or to the left. And this gives us another picture of a traveler who's going down a defined path and being careful that he keeps himself from de uh, deviating from that path in any way, but, but taking the path that God has laid out. Not a shortcut. We're shortcut people, aren't we? It's kind of like talking about, you know, to somebody the other day that, that's going through some struggles. And, and, I, and I explained to the individual, I said, you, you, you've come up in an instant generation. You want everything to be done today. But you see, growth doesn't happen in a day. God doesn't work like that. 
It's a sustained kind of thing that God works in our lives. It gives us another picture of that traveler walking down that pathway. So we're not to let our guard down and get casual in our walk, but we're to stay vigilant, ever vigilant, increasing our vigilance, if you will, in the pursuit of Christ's likeness. Our daily walk is to be worthy of the grace that God has poured out to us. Remember what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4, starting in verse 1. He says, I, a prisoner of the Lord Jesus, uh, of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called. Then he says, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, being diligent to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Walk worthy of the calling. Oh, folks, I don't want to get to the end of it and find that I deviated to a worthless path. I want to be worthy. There's no doubt 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, how many twos are in there? 2022 will have many opportunities and challenges personally and for our families, for our church, in the marketplace. We must hold fast to the admonitions that God had given us. We must be careful to guard the things as treasures, and thus we find success as we travel the road. The second element was obedience. This, too, will bleed over into the next verse. If we're careful to do, that will call for absolute obedience. God promises that if we place all our weight upon him and we trust him obediently, he will always cause our feet to walk on a straight path. That's exactly what Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6 say. Some of you have memorized that. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. Now, those of you that have been on, coming in on Wednesday night throughout the year, is there a verse that uh, I've thrown out to you over and over and over again? Ad nauseum? You may be tired of it? Well, hear it one more time. Isaiah 42 and verse 16 says, I will lead the blind in the way they do not know. In paths that they have not known, I will guide them. Do you know what tomorrow holds? Who's able to guide you down tomorrow's path? Only God. Because he's at the end of that path. And then he's right there with you to take you down that path. He says, I will turn the darkness before them into light and rough places into level ground. These are the things that I will do. And I will not forsake them. That was a good verse to hang on last year. I think it's a good verse to hang some of this year upon as well. In order to obey the Word of God, we have to know the Word of God. So that leads you to the third imperative, be saturated with the Word. I am so pleased at, at the uh, response of the daily studies and the people that have come on and, and the numbers hold and it's, it, it's been a blessing that people are studying together day after day after day in the Word of God. And I'm praying that they're taking the admonitions in those words and applying it. And, and, and in that is giving them strength and satisfaction. Joshua was immersed in the Word of God. He's to be immersed in that Word. And in the book of the law, it was to permeate his life. It was to direct his steps and inform every decision that he made. And when you read the book of Joshua, you find that that's, except for one occasion, that was the pattern of Joshua's life. Verse 8, the book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will achieve success. Joshua, you must be full of the scripture that whatever it, it speaks, you're to dress to God's people, divine truth, Joshua needs to flow from your lips. Such straight talk necessitates that we meditate on the Word of God, constantly pondering 
and absorbing the word. You see, we can have a, a, a firm grasp upon the word of God, but if we ever stop thinking about it, we lose that grip. It's to fill our heart. It's to fill our mind. It's to fill our consciences. It's, it's to direct, uh, direct our path. In a world full of distractions, meditation is a lost art. I've got to tell you, it's, it, this last year I've, I've had to use medication on my eyes every morning. And uh, it, it, it's kind of revolutionized some things for me. I get up early in the morning, and I go down, and I put the drops in, and I, I sit with a, a, a pad over my eyes. And for about an hour, I have nothing to do except sit there and meditate upon the Word of God. Running Scripture and thinking about, you know, Scripture. Not what I'm going to be teaching as we get ready to plug in and, and, and broadcast. But just sitting alone with God in that quiet spot, all, you know, sight, everything out, and just his word to meditate on. It's been rich. It's been full. It's been a blessing. Without this vital focus, all our spiritual efforts can be, be uh, misdirected and, and futile. Maybe for this next year, we need to endeavor to dig deeper into the word of God than we've ever done before. When God shows you a nugget of truth, you need to cherish it. You need to ponder it. We've shared this. Meditate on it until it becomes a part of your thought process. Until, uh, uh, you need to practice it until it becomes second nature to you. Allow the Word of God to permeate your life and, 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 and direct your steps and inform your decisions. God, what does your Word say about this? Paul counsels us, as he does young Timothy, in 2 Timothy 2.15, be diligent to present yourself approved of God as workmen who do not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. Timothy, as a faithful pastor, was to accurately handle God's word. That is, he had to know what it said and what it didn't say. He had to know how to understand and, and apply it, how, how, to, how it could be understood and applied to individual lives or to the church as a whole, to himself. It wasn't enough to know some Bible stories and verses and sprinkle them throughout his conversations. No, he, his teaching was to be accurate. It was to be cut a straight line, if you will, so that his teaching would be correct and clear. Charles Spurgeon, that great preacher of the 1800s, said swords are uh, meant to cut and hack and wound and kill. And the word of truth is for pricking men in the heart and killing their sin. The word of God is not committed to God's ministers to amuse men uh, with its glitter or to charm them with the jewels of its hilt, but to conquer their souls for Jesus. This word, powerful, alive. Sharper than any two-edged sword. When Paul counsels young Timothy, by extension, us to be diligent to present ourselves a workman approved of God, he's calling us to accurately handle the word of truth. Now, the figure of speech is rich in its symbolism. When we talk about ac accurately handling something, it, it brings several things to mind. Rightly handling the word as one would rightly handle a sword. You wouldn't give a sword to a baby and say, go hack away. Plowing straight with the Word of God, properly presenting the essential doctrines and truths of the Word of God, properly dissecting and arranging the Word of God like a priest would dissect and arrange the animal for sacrifice. To allot each their portion as someone who distributes food at a table. You know, we've got a multi-generational table set at our house. Christmas, we had four generations, wasn't it, son? Yes. Absolutely. Now, some people can't eat some things because of physical things, so you know, you don't feed them that. I guarantee a Leilani, I, I could, I could put a piece of that that uh, prime rib in front of Leilani, Leilani. You know, that wouldn't be the right food for her, would it? And that's what it's talking about. 
So how do you saturate your life with the Word of God? Next chapter, Paul tells Timothy in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, you know this, you could probably quote it, all Scripture is inspired by God and profitable or beneficial for teaching, for rebuke, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man or woman of God may be fully capable, equipped for every good work. Might I suggest that every time you sit down with the Word of God, there are four questions you ask yourself. How many of you that go through the dailies know those four questions? Well, let me share them with you. Is there some doctrine or teaching that I need to understand more fully? <coughs> Second, is this scripture uncovering some sin or error in my life that needs to be dealt with? Third question. Does this passage show me some corrective measure that I need to take to make an adjustment in my life to the truth of the Word of God? Is it correcting me? And fourth, is there some instruction as to how I might be able to do the work that God's called me to do more competently? You see, instead of just reading, and, and, and reading for reading's sake is good, but if you're going to get into it, you read, and if it's only one verse, what is that verse saying? It's going to say one th something in one or more of these areas. For the Word of God is profitable. For what? For teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. Then before you get up, pray a word of committal and surrender yourself to practice and do what that word is saying for you to do. Make this next year a year that you more fully saturate your life with the word of God, not letting it depart from you. And first and final, be saturated, or sustained rather, by the Lord. Be sustained by the Lord's power. Here's the promise that God gave to Joshua in verse 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. What an incredible promise. No matter what may come down the pipeline in 2022, God will be with us. Whatever challenges we face. Some of us may, you know, this last year, some of you have fought some hard-fought battles in your life. You're getting ready to lose a dear brother in your life. That's a hard-fought battle. God will sustain and strengthen. Some of you lost loved ones this year. And you can stand and testify the strengthening power of Almighty God. Well, you know what? Things didn't change at the stroke of midnight on Friday night. Everything that we lived with in 2021, we will live with and more in 2022. Who are you going to look to to sustain you? Be sustained by the Lord. Great promise. No matter what comes down our way in 2022, God will be with us wherever we go and whatever experience is thrown at us. The Lord pledges he will go before Joshua, walk beside him, protect and provide for him, and God's ever-present, all-sufficient supply for Joshua, everything that he needed for victory and, 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 and for service, God gave him. Even so, God is with us in every step of our journey. Remember the promise of the Master at the end of the Great Commission. Matthew 28 and, and 18 through 20, we know that, but how many of us pay a lot of attention to that last sentence? And I am with you to the end of the age. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I will be with you until the end of the age. Keeping any or all of these nine imperatives we, we, we've looked at since last Monday is possible only by the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. 
It is by his guidance and strength that we are sustained one more year after one more year. And as we grow in our communion and love for God and for one another, we may all find him faithful who has called us, saved us, sanctified us, and sealed us for eternity. You going to let him sustain you? As we look upon new challenges, new joys, new heartaches in the coming year, may your love and honor for Christ be renewed like his mercies are day by day. So what do we have? We have be consecrated thoroughly unto God. Be observant in the world around you. See the world the way he does. See people as lost like he does. See the hurting around you. Listen to the pain around you. Be involved in those lives. So be prepared. Be prepared to give a reason for the hope that you have within you. Be faithful in knowing him more fully and serving him more completely. Be fruitful by constantly abiding in him so he can hang whatever fruit he desires upon your life. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Be straight in your walk with him. Don't deviate from the right or left, but keep your focus upon him and let him take you down the right path. Be saturated, fully immersed in the word of God and the word of God in you. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you will and it will be done unto you. And lastly, be sustained. Be sustained by the power and the presence of Christ in your life. And as a final note, I'd take you back to the top of the list and make one final comment. It all begins there at your consecration. By setting Christ apart in your heart as Lord. What is it God has shown you today of himself? And what will you do in response to what he's shown you? God, I want to thank you so much for your love and your mercy. I thank you, Lord, that the sustaining power of God the incredible inworking of the Holy Spirit. God, I thank you. I thank you for your love for us. And I pray, Lord, that we will respond with hearts fully and thoroughly given over to you. God, you have done great things. But Lord, there is more great things, even greater than we have seen in our future. Lord, I pray that we will be worthy of the challenges you put before us. That we'll be worthy of the pain and the heartache that may come our way. Lord, I say that because there is no challenge that comes into our lives that wasn't first filtered through the Father. And he said, he's worthy. I trust him. Just like with dealing with Job, you knew Job was worthy of what was thrown at him. Lord, in the good times and the bad, we pray our eyes will always be focused on you and our lips will always sing your praise. In plenty and want, Lord, let us be content. We don't know what 2022 holds. Don't pretend to. But we know who holds that year. And who's already at the end of it. And will lead us there. Faithfully. Thank you, Lord. Bless now this time as we consider what it is we need to do in response to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn of invitation we're going to sing. You join them. 
and sing, I need thee every hour. If you need prayer, you want to come this morning for something, we'll be right here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. As we get ready to uh, depart this morning, I have a, uh, a decision card here. I, I told Miss Dottie that she didn't have to come because it's a little tough to get up the aisle. But all of you give give a wave out here to Miss Dottie. Uh, there she is. She's waving at you. Miss Dottie, like, she's moved here. She doesn't live where she used to live anymore. She lives here over down at Bonaventure. And she kind of likes our church. And she kind of likes to make it her church. She wants it to be her family and her home. It already is. We love her. But she wants to come on a transfer of her letter from her former church. If you all are excited about that, say amen. amen. And you all make sure you love her and let her know that you welcome her in. Is there anybody that's opposed that? I'm sure there's not. You just let her know that you love her. Miss Dottie, I love you. It's good to have you be a part of us. You have been since you got here. May God bless you. If you're out there and, and God's put a decision upon your heart, he's spoken to you today as he has others, and he has shown you something that he desires you to do in your life, would you just right now stop and say, God, I will, I, do, I will, I commit, I surrender. And maybe it's coming to him for the first time. Maybe it's coming into a living, loving relationship with him. And you've come to that point. Would you just surrender your life to him and say, save me. Come into my life. Be the Lord. And then get a hold of me, would you? I want to get stuff to you. I want to help you on that journey and get people hooked up in your life that can help you. I don't know what God's saying to anybody, but may he bless you as we move for you. And don't forget, give him all the glory for that. Because God did that, not man. We're not capable, but God is. God bless you as we go out. Father, thank you for this day. 
And Lord, let us serve you faithfully out there in the field where you've called us. In Jesus' name. Sing us out. All right, thanks for coming, guys. Have a great week. turned into wine open the eyes of the blind there's no one like you none like you into the darkness you shine out of the ashes we rise there's no one